Well, it's getting close to the wire, y'all. I was going through my schedule the other day and we're getting close to the end of our top secret first edition series on our classic tabletop RPG Friday. So we're about a month or so out before we go into a new game. One of the classics that for those who don't know, we are gonna get down and dirty with the starter edition of Traveler once we get out of Top Secret. Welcome everyone to RPG Elite. This is a place where I focus on putting the RP back into RPG. The way I do that is by giving you tools and tips and tutorials and also real talk about the RPG space and culture. Tabletop RPG space and culture that is. Now, before we get into the video today, I want to go ahead and extend an invitation to those of you who have seen more than one of the videos here on the channel. And maybe you're interested in supporting the channel just a little bit beyond watching the videos themselves. Well, then I want to invite you to join the Elite Squad. Now, the Elite Squad are members of the RPG Elite community. They're interested in RPG Elite philosophy and other content that you won't find here on YouTube. And also they all are automatically entered into a monthly giveaway, something that we just started in 2023. And last month I gave away a copy of Chronos Builder, which is a 3D and 2D map making software. And I've got a couple more of those keys and I've got some other things that I'm working on already is in terms of giveaways and I only need 12. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna be much. If you are interested in those things behind the scenes, plus other things that as time goes on, I would like to build up for other things for my elite squad as well, then go ahead down in the description below, there is a link. It's the first link that you're gonna see. It says elite squad sign up, click on that link. It's gonna take you to my landing page there. It's gonna ask you for your full name and your email address. You're gonna put your name and email in there. Click on that button. I'm gonna send you a little email, a little welcome email, and then you are automatically entered into the lead squad. It is that easy. Let's move into it, folks. Top secret first edition today, talking about combat extras. So all those other little things that are connected to combat in top secret first edition, we're gonna talk about it today. And then, of course, I got the question of the vid for you on the other side. So I'll see you then. Let's roll them. The type and size of ammunition matters mainly in reference to bulletproof equipment. There are four types of ammo considered in Top Secret 1E. Standard, armor piercing, dum dum, and gyro jet. Top Secret First Edition covers four types of bulletproof equipment. You got your shields, your vests, your helmet, and glass. So let's take a brief look at each of these. The shields referred to in the core book are hand carried shields. Depending on the type of bullets used and the range away from the target carrying the shield, there would be a modifier included in the to hit found on the ammunition type table. We go here and we pull up the ammunition type. Say your range is point blank and you have some non armor piercing bullets, then the modifier is going to be a minus 21. Here again, you got your range and what the modifier is going to be for each. It just depends on the kind of ammo that you have, how effective that it will be. Shields add plus four to the hand-to-hand -hand value of the character holding it, whether they are on offense or defense. However, they have a minus 30% penalty, and you can round that up to that character's coordination. So if I'm going to pull up Sarah here and we're going to look at her coordination of 100, then if she had a shield, then it would be at 70. Now, shields offer no protection against explosive devices. If a character is wearing a bulletproof vest and are hit in the upper and lower back or lower back, 
or chest and abdomen area. They will reduce the incoming damage by 20% if the bullet being used is of higher caliber than .32. Now, if the caliber is lower than .32, then the wound would be reduced by one injury point. Bulletproof vests always reduce the coordination by 5% as well as being ineffective against explosives. Now, how you want to round that off, they don't really say. So you can round it off. You can round it up or down. Totally up to you on those percentages. If your character takes a headshot while they have on a helmet that's able to protect them, the damage reduction is by 25% when the ammunition is above a .32 caliber. For lower calibers, no injury will occur. Helmets are useless against explosives and there is no effect on your coordination. Now you cannot tell me that having a bulletproof shield, wearing a vest and helmet will not be effective at all against explosives. Ah, that's silly. I would definitely change that rule and give it a percentage, like 10% per piece of equipment in use. Bulletproof glass refers to any glass that's used like normal glass. For example, if it's on a building or car or door, regular bullets or shotgun pellets cannot penetrate bulletproof glass. Armor piercing shells, explosives, and things like metal cutting torches can penetrate bulletproof glass with normal effectiveness. Underwater combat is a special kind of combat scenario where the combatants are both submerged underwater. There are a few special rules when it comes to underwater combat. The first and most obvious rule is that normal guns will not work underwater. The only gun that will work underwater is a spear gun, which you can find on the weapons table. I can show you that right here. Right down here, you have the manual spear gun. There are also some special crossbows that can be modified to be used underwater, which cost about $150 in the core book to modify. But if you adjust for inflation, that's going to be about $540 today. Other weapons your administrator may allow for underwater use should have their ranges decreased by about 75%. And that includes and is actually targeted specifically towards drone weapons. Hand-to-hand -hand combat underwater is different in that the defender only gets to choose one defensive maneuver. In addition, damage is reduced by 25%. If using any kind of throwing maneuver, that damage is reduced by 75%. And when in doubt, because you are in water, round it down. If a character is wearing scuba gear and their opponent decides to cut their air hose, the attacker would strike on the non-trained striking combat table. They would need to get a successful gouge to head neck result. And if the damage is three or more points, the hose is cut. If the two combatants have scuba gear on and one decides to pull the mask off the other, the same procedure is followed as cutting a hose. If successful, the opponent whose mask is torn off has their offense reduced by 50%. You can round that down. The damage that is done is to the equipment, not the character, in both of those cases. Damage is also cumulative. So if you damaged it for one point in one phase and then two points in the second phase, the effect would happen in the second phase. A character whose air supply is cut off has about 30 seconds to find a new source of air before they start to pass out. If the character is ascending at a rate of more than two feet 
per second, which is about 10 feet per turn, they have a 25% base chance to suffer from nitrogen narcosis, which is commonly known as the bends, or also known as decompression sickness or DCS. This percentage chance goes up by 5% for every foot faster than two feet a character is ascending. So for example, if a character ascends upward four feet a second, then their chance for decompression sickness goes up by 10%. You got two extra feet times 5%, that equals 10%. And that would make it a grand total of 35% of them suffering from the bends or DCS once they got up top. The compression sickness incapacitates the character until they get medical attention. So if they happen to have DCS, they cannot do anything. There is no battles, there is no singing, and there is no dancing. You would just sit there until you get some medical attention. Now, in terms of underwater combat, there's a whole bunch of other things as far as weapons that you can use now in our day, you gotta remember when the game was made back in the late 70s, early 80s. And so there wasn't too much except the spear gun. Or if you want some more options, then you can always go and get the top secret companion. But there's a whole bunch of other things that you can now use that have a actual pistol that shoots like long spear-like projectiles out of it. I was just watching a video and preparing for this video today so there's other things you can add of course you're going to have to come up with the stats for those so it's going to be a little bit more work on the back end for that but there are some other weapons that you can use underwater more than you think hey if you like this video today then go ahead show a brother a little youtube algorithm love and hit the like button for a brother and also if you have seen a few of these videos you like what's going on here you want to support it and you want to know when these videos are coming out then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell i come out with videos on tuesdays and fridays so if you happen to forget and you got the notification bell clicked you don't have to worry about it another thing with the notification thing make sure you have all notifications if you want to get the notifications when they come out because if you do not do that then it kind of randomly just chooses whatever, you know, it wants to do. The algorithm is funny like that. Now, I mean, let's get to the question of the vid. The question of the vid is this. Now, we talked about underwater combat for about half of this video, and that's kind of an exotic, weird place to have combat. In your campaign, what is the most exotic or weirdest place or locale that combat has taken place? Or what's a place that you would like for it to take place because you think that the environment would be interesting to have a combat in let me know down in the comments below hey that's it for me i'm going to be out like a scout so you know i got to do my snuggle puss so exit. <laughs> all until next time y'all i'm gonna catch you on the flip and if you got a game this weekend then Happy gaming. I hope it's an RPG Elite session. If you want to watch some more of these videos, Top Secret First Edition, you know what I mean? Then go ahead, right there. Understand? All right, I'm out. 5,000 leaks. A brother is out.